Hey guys, here we are. We are going to start the build of our Great Plains Extra 300S. It's an aerobatic 60 size sports scale kit. Um, I've had this for years, as I've explained before. And um, I thought you guys would enjoy this. Uh, it is a, if you've ever thought about getting into remote control planes or something like that, I really believe in building a kit. Instead, of, they also have what's called an ARF, which is an almost ready to fly version. Um, you can get them in pretty much all the planes, and it's it's really kind of the thing nowadays is to buy an ARF. It's a kit that's already built and everything. It's all covered, and basically you just put a motor in it and your radio system. And some 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 of these kits, you can get them, and they are ready to fly. They come with the motor already installed and radio and everything. You don't have to do anything. Uh, you just charge your batteries up and away you go. But that's kind of a big um, direction a lot that the RC hobby world has gone into is buying these pre-made planes and everything. I really enjoy the building aspect of it. Yes, it takes more time, but then I know the whole plane and everything and I have and I enjoy building it. It's 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 a lot of enjoyment for me. So I thought I'd bring you guys in with this uh, build here. I am going to be putting this together, but a perfect engine for this plane would be like a, an OS61FX engine. It's it's an aerobatic plane and it's high performance. And that would be a really good engine for this plane, but I don't like nitro anymore. I, I've had tons and tons of planes over the years. And I've had a lot of nitro engines, and I still have some nitro engines and everything. But the price of the nitro fuel is just skyrocketed. So for me to go out and fly, I mean, if you go out and you spend, you know, four or five hours out at the flying field or something like that, and you do, say, I don't know, half a dozen flights, you're, you, you can use up a half a gallon of fuel a day. And that fuel is going anywhere from about $20 to $25 a gallon. That's pretty expensive. So I like to fly with gas engines. So I have uh, pretty much, I, I used to fly larger scale stuff and everything, but I've kind of really downsized. So I'm looking at this plane because I can put this plane together, put the wings on and everything, leave it all assembled, put it into my truck if I want to go to the, take a trip to the flying field, and with the wings on and everything, just slide it into the back of my expedition, take it to flying field, pull it out. I don't have to assemble it, everything. It's not really that hard to assemble. You just slide the wings onto a tube, um, and there's a bolt that's on the inside of each one that holds the wings together, holds the wings to the plane. It's really not that big a deal, but I just, I just want something I can just in, out, go fly. So that's why I'm doing this one. But I wanted to do a gas job. So what I did is I bought this here engine. Um, I think I got it off of like, I can't really remember where I got this from. It's been a couple years. Um, I did put some oil in it and have the thing lubricated up and everything. So it spins freely. It's never been ran. Um, I bought it in for this blanket and I just put a little bit of oil because I knew it was going to be, I thought it was going to be like six months to a year before I got built, but it's been about three years. Um, so it's all good and everything, brand new engine. But this is a, um, a little small little gasoline engine. This runs off a pre-mixed gas, kind of like what your chainsaw runs off of. And it's going to be a little bit heavier, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, we can always put weight in the plane to and move things around to balance the plane out so it flies good. But this is the engine that I'm going to be installing in this. You could also put a four-stroke engine into it. And in a four-stroke, they're saying something like about a 91, which I actually do have an OS 91F up there. It's an FS 91. So I actually do have that engine, but it still runs off of nitro fuel. It has a lot of different sound. The two-stroke, um, like the 61 FX, it has a real high pitch to it, you know, and you know, it's real noisy, and it. it winds up real fast and everything it spools up real fast you get lots of little instant power to it the four stroke uh, versions of this they have little lifters and everything on top of the engine that comes up and everything and those have a different sound to it it kind of almost sounds more like an airplane engine 
if you can understand that, it kind of has that tick 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 noise to it. So it kind of sounds more realistic. That's why people like them. Um, they don't have the the rev up like the two the two strokes do. And in the gas engines, basically, it sounds like a little mini chainsaw. But these things here, you can run a gas you know a gallon of gas. You can pre mix it just like a chainsaw. And you may end up, that may cost you for a gallon of gas and the oil to mix it like $3.50. And you're going to get longer flight times out of this too than the nitro. It doesn't burn up as much. So, I mean, you can go out and you can fly hours and you may burn up a quarter of a gallon of gas, which is like a buck and a half or whatever it is. I don't know. I'm not doing math right now in my head. But you guys can do that. But it's, it's a lot cheaper. So, I don't know anything about this engine. I've read some reviews on it. It's just a cheap little China motor. I don't know what the manufacturer is. It just says ET20. I think it cost me $100. I think it was like $95 or something. I saw this deal on it. It was a special going on. And so I bought it and I did some check some reviews on it. And some people said it's great. Some people said it's not so great. I don't know. Well, take a peek at it and see what it is. If it doesn't work out, I'll just slap another motor into it and away we go. It does have electronic ignition. So I'll have to have a separate battery for that, and then I'll have that hooked up to my remote so I can just flip a switch and it'll just kill the motor. And there we go. One. As you can see, I have unboxed the whole kit, and this is the pile of wood that comes with it. And it's just it's just all these different pieces. Some of the stuff is balsa, some of the stuff is a light ply, um, a lot of different sticks. This is balsa sticks. This is like a hardwood stick over here. Um, they're all used in different parts of the plane. These are the plans for the plane. These are full-size plans. And I have rolled them backwards because they've been in a box for many years. Rolled up in one direction. So to get them lay kind of somewhat smooth, you just roll them backwards, put the rubber bands back on them, let them sit for a little while. Probably should have done that like a week ago. Um, and you let that sit and that will help it do it. The book that comes in, you can see here, this is this is how the parts come. And this is one thing that really beneficial about this about this kit is that it comes in a lot of these things, these little parts, these little wooden parts are die cut. And you can see how it has a number on there, and I've like drawn inside the little stamp so that you get so that you guys can see it better. And each part on this whole piece of wood here has a number stamp on it. And you can go through and you can highlight that so you can re easily read it. That's what they recommend. Um, I'm not going to do it for all the pieces. I've done a bunch of these, so I'm, I can do it. But it gives you, like, inside the, inside the book here, inside the plan book, it gives you a layout of all the die-cut pieces. And these pieces are just kind of set into this wood and you just, all you just kind of do is just break it off around. This is a light ply here, so it's kind of harder to break. But you can see it just pops right out. And see, it'll come right out of this piece here. See how that just pops right out of there? So that'll just come right out. And you just pop it out. And here is the sheet that shows all the different pieces that go together to build this plane kit. And they have them all labeled, and each little part has a number on it that will correspond with the instruction book. And this is one time that I will be using an instruction book. <laughs> so there we go. So what I do all the time is I always photocopy the manuals so that I have... What is this? Oh, okay. Um... I always photocopy the actual, I go online and I download the whole manual and then I print it all off so that I can have the book and I'm, a lot of times you got to flip back and forth and look at different things. This way I can have the pages out so I don't have to lose my spot. So that's why I do that. And when I was bringing the pieces out, that's what I did is I pulled these two pieces out. But I guess I could have just opened the book up because <laughs> right there they are in the, right next to each other. But the first step here is make the stab leading edge doubler. So that's what we're going to be doing. 
and we're going to be working on the tail of the plane. Well, we got our pieces here, and what we're going to do is we're going to make one large sheet. It's, a, it's only a sixteenth of an inch thick balsa, so it's very thin. We need to make thicker pieces and make a you know, whole sheet together. So what we do to we have made our flat edges, and what we do is we take one sheet and we push against the other and we squeeze them together, and then we just put a piece of uh, masking tape over the top of the seam, just like that. Then when you go down, we do the same thing, we just squeeze them together, put a piece of masking tape down here, do the same thing. Just kind of work our way down. <clears throat> just like that. And then what we do is we just take the whole piece and we flip it over the top. You know, it's attached on the back that keeps it all together. And then what we can do is we can use some weights here and just hold it down so that it sits level. like so. <clears throat> and then all you do is you take a piece, you take um, get a piece of paper towel ready. This stuff dries very fast. This is CA glue. Um, I'm going to try to pronounce it. Cryo, cryo, no, cryo accelerate adhesive. It's a special glue that we use in airplanes. It comes in on different consistencies. This is thin, it's almost like water. Um, there's a medium and there's also a thick, it's kind of like a gel. Um, this stuff is used for airplanes, it dries, it, it has like a chemical reaction and then it dries and it'll soak into the wood and then dry. And thin is what you use because it soaks right on into the wood. So all we do is just put this right on the seam and we just go down the whole thing. And I have this sitting on a piece of wax paper on my bench. And we just put a nice bead of this CA down the whole thing like that. And then we just come behind it and we just wipe it. Just like that to get the excess so there's no big bubbles on it. We'll do the same thing on this piece. And all we're doing is just basically putting a bead along, just trying to coat both pieces and it runs in between the gaps and fills it in. Here we are and we're back. I, if you didn't catch it in my other videos, I was doing some recording and putting this here stabilizer together and I ended up having a bad SD card. So the actual recording of putting this together is gone. 
not a big deal. You guys will see how this went together um, when I put together the fin and you know the elevators too. That's what I'm going to be doing next is starting to build the elevators. But um, the and they'll be built in pretty much the same way, except what's going to happen is they will not be sheeted. This here is was a combination of balsa. There's a balsa front leading stabilizer that's in here. And then there is a basswood, a piece of basswood that goes through here. That's glued on the back of that. And then there is also a uh, balsa centerpiece that goes in here. And then a piece of balsa, or basswood on the back of it. And then it has the rear stabilizer doubler that goes down the length of it. And that's all glued together and everything. And then, then there's all kinds of different sticks that go through here to strengthen it in certain places. And then I put together that sheeting. And basically you just glue the whole sheeting down, put it on top of there, weight it down. And uh, that's what I have these bags full of BBs for. You just put them on there when the glue dries. That holds everything down where it's gonna be. And when you get done, you end up with a stabilizer. And these stabilizers are very, very rigid. They I mean, they they won't move at all. I might actually end up putting some wiring in here too, some rigging from the fin to the stabilizer to make sure that it all stays all good and everything because this is a very aerobatic plane. So there'll be a lot of G forces on this one. It's flipping around. So there, this is the stabilizer, and it is completed. Um, it needs finished sanding and all that stuff, but it's pretty much completed. And it's just feather light. It, there's nothing to this, but it's very strong. So the stabilizer is done, and we'll move on to the elevator. All right, guys, now we're working on the elevator. I've already completed this side. I have it glued. It's all pinned down, and I'm, I'm letting this one dry. You want to have it exactly where it's going to be. You want to have it pinned down nice and flat so you get a nice flat elevator so it doesn't have any kind of warpage in it or nothing. And you just want to let the glue dry. Doesn't take long. It's probably good enough to remove already, but we'll build the other side. I did cut the leading edge already. Um, I did that and I pinned it down already. And I also uh, cut the root here. And the way that the plans will tell you is they'll be you know in here and it'll tell you what to actually make it out of. And so the root end here is five sixteenths by one by twelve inch. And so it was. You know, it was a full piece here. It was 12 inches long. I already cut this piece out of it. And then basically what you do is you just lay it over the plans. And you just take a nice felt tip and you just, you know, make your marks on there. And then you just use a little hobby saw. And this has got very, very fine teeth on it. It makes a very nice cut. It cuts real easily. So I already have that out cut. And um, what I can do is I can actually just glue this down here. I did this just to speed things up. So you guys are just sitting to watch me. And the basic way that you want to do this is you just want to put glue on the end here. And I'm using medium CA for this here joint. And then you just want to squeeze it together and press it down so you got it nice and even there. Get it where it's going to be. And just push a stick pin through it down into my table, and that keeps it right where I need it to be. Um, what I'm going to do next is I need to do the trailing edge here, and on the trailing edge, it's using a uh, 5 16 by 5 16 piece of balsa. So, what I can do is I can just lay it down on the, on the plants. And it's going to need to have just a little bit of a taper on it. So I'll use my nice little flat bar sender that I have. These are from Habico. I have different lengths, different contours to them. And it don't take much, just a couple, because this is balsa wood. So this stuff really stands easy. So we just want to get that contour to match up there. And just lay it on the, on the plans here. And to tell you the truth, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my hobby saw right on here. But 
I want to make not make sure not to go all the way into the wax paper because I don't want to cut it because if I do that when I glue this the glue is going to seep down through the cut and get on the plants so I get it most of the way through and then I finish it off I'll put it back on the plants look at it I can put my nice bar sander on there and just touch it up. That looks really nice right there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to attach this one on here. So what I'll do is I'll just put my finger on there so I know how far back to glue. some nice pressure on there get it lined up just on the edge here you know and you want to make sure that the, it's flush with the other piece and I'll put a stick pin in there then what I'll do is I'll go down the piece and put a stick pin to line it up with the lines on the plants so it's all nice and straight and you can see how I'm putting them I put the one inch straight because I just wanted to get it down but then I press it down onto my table and I put one in sideways too and that keeps the piece flat that pushes at angles and it keeps it nice and flat to the to my work surface which I know is flat then these little cross members here these are the same made out of the same thing it's 5 16 by 5 16 balsa so basically all I need to do is just place it over the plants. And just make some little marks on there. Cut my piece and then trial fit it. And it may need to be sanded just a little bit, which it does. There you go, that's a nice fit right there. Now you gotta be quick with this. Because you're gluing two ends. So you just basically put a spot of medium CA on each end. Put it on there, line it up. Press it down into place, and then I'll use another T-pin and put it down in there. And I just do the last three here. like that now we got our cross ones going there now I'm going to take an eighth inch by 5 16 piece of balsa and this is pretty easy it's just a, a cross piece it doesn't have to be perfectly cut because it is balsa so what's gonna happen is Basically, I'm going to press it down in there, and it's going to kind of mold it right into the corner. You could file like a little angle onto these pieces and everything, but it's balsa, and it just kind of squishes in there. So, so I usually try to cut it just a little bit too long, and then I just push it down in there. Just like that. Let's push it down so it's even with the top there.
I'm going to put a piece, an end piece on here and it's going to glue this end on here and this end into this piece. It's going to make it stronger. So I'm going to try to get just a little tiny bit over. Because I can sand it. Just like that. Now this piece here i got to be kind of fast with. On there, that there we go. And this last little piece I'll put on here, and I'll actually just glue it right on there and cut it off. like that. The CA dries very, very fast. You got to be quick with it. The thinner velocity of, of CA glue that you have is going to be faster drying. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thin CA, which is almost like water, and I'm just going to kind of pour it over all the seams. And what it's going to do is it's going to soak in through that balsa wood and it's going to make it a very, it's going to make it a strong joint. It's already pretty strong, but just a little added touch to it. Just like that. And then to help with the sanding process, go over with a paper towel and just kind of wipe off the excess so it doesn't dry a big lump on there. And I can tell you that right now, this stick pin is going to be glued in there. So I need to get that out of there. Because that was completely encased in that CA, so that was going to just glue. So I need to get that one out. But I need to leave as many as I possibly can in so it stays flat while it dries. Now this one over here is dry already. So I can pull the stick pins out. And then I'm going to take my little flat planer here. And I'm just going to give it a quick sandy. this side with the same thing with the thin CA. Put it in all the joints. Just like that. And then the same thing, just wipe it off. guys we got them both done here's both of the elevators these will be tied together in a wire link so that they operate together so they'll be going up and down like this this is a be movement I still have to sand a 45 degree on here and in the back of it and the sides here will be actually be rounded um, that that's a final sandy so we just we're done with this right now but you can see we got both of them you can kind of see how they're constructed together like this now, it was the same way for this piece here. It was just a bunch of pieces, and then the cross members, you can see them, and there was some blocking in a corner and stuff. It was the same way that was built, that the stabilizer was built. But then what happened is, took some uh, eighth inch false supply that I actually glued together, and was laid over the top of it. This is what's left over. This is actually for the fin. And, um, 
And then basically what happened is they, you put glue all on it and then you just lay the piece down on it. And then you put the bag over the top of it and that keeps it weighted down until the glue dries and then you pull it off and then you sand it and trim it all the way around the piece and everything. And you do that on both sides and that makes it really ultra strong. But these here, I mean, these, these ain't going to, these are not gonna flex or nothing. Just, I mean, there's nothing to these. The weight is just, I mean, it's just, there's nothing. You see how they just kind of float. It's, they're so lightweight. So we are done with this section here. And we will put this aside and we'll start on the fin now.